Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trufinet, and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite. We're at the Raffle and Fair, where we can try out a few of the uh, magic powers, the vigors. There we go. I love these guys. Let's play Cast Out the Devil. So these are carnival attractions. We need to hit the devil with the power we just received. Uh, there we go. Just need to be careful. So Bucking Bronco is the power that lifts people up into the sky. So these are just uh, demonstrations of what we're going to be able to do later on in the game. There we go. Neville, devil number two. And then devil number three. And there we go. And remember, if you need it lifted, lofted, tossed, or tumbled, Bucking Bronco is your answer. There we go. So it's mainly used as a, a utility tool just to lift stuff and uh, be able to uh, move it further away because it keeps things lifted up in the air. But here we go. Bring down the skyline, fox. So there's people, uh, well, the fox populi hanging on rails and we can actually uh, use this air shotgun to try and kill as many as we can. Let's try that out. Here we go. You do need to be careful because it's not as easy as you might think. Just need to get them as fast as we can. Couldn't take the last one there. That's two. There we go, 20 points. That's everything we needed. First place, and now we can take up the Silver Eagle um, pouch, which is the most money you can get out of these things. Then we have a Juggler, High Striker. I don't think we, we can actually do this. Oh, we can. Kind of forgot about that. A one, two, three. Bing! So there we go. Booker is quite the heavy hitter. And then we have the heavy, uh, the mechanical horses. Which, uh, which are on display as well. Ultimated Stallions. Is there anything here? Two little kids uh, smoking, because of course we're in the uh, the era where that was uh, normal. Because right now we, would be, we wouldn't want our little kids smoking now, would we? Let's take a, a bit more of a look, see around. Colombian Flag Company. So people are apparently looking for jobs. Hot dogs, hot dogs, Alexander Boxful. hot dogs, Boxful. Hear your voice from the past in the present. And now we can actually try out our very own voxophone. Here we go. What's a voxophone? What's a voxophone? Exactly that. A personal record of voice. Hey, just so we're clear, I'm not paying for this. Just a demonstration, sir. Don't panic, Booker. Don't panic. A life with vigor is a life that's bigger. I love that. I love that quote. And then a bluegrass, uh, a bluegrass band. Is that another one? Yeah. Okay. Daisy Fitzroy. So Daisy Fitzroy is the leader of the Vox Populi. So again, 20 points to win. I'm gonna have to be careful here. Have to be careful. Almost there. There we go. 20 points. The Vox defeated, Daisy Fitzroy slain. You, sir, shall be richly rewarded. 
So at this point we kind of have the most money we can get out of this area, if I'm not mistaken. And now we have the vending machine, Vending Vidi Vigor. So of course, looking at the things we can buy, we have Bucking Bronco. Bucking Bronco unlock, but we need $375 if we want to do that. So yeah, we're not going to do that just yet. And now, the most creepy sight on this fair. Only in our fair city will you see such amazing feats of technological prowess! Because, uh, yeah. This is a handyman. Batman's auto bodies, the handyman. So, a model miracle, live pain free evermore. So, it displays a man that couldn't get out of his bed anymore, and after that, a happy man that is uh, bionically augmented. But as you can see, this guy doesn't look so happy about his predicament because he looks like he, well, kind of died. And there's actually a heart in the middle there governing his, uh, yeah, his body, which is creepy. So the first kind of disturbing uh, sight inside of Colombia herself. And then we have all the powers available at this time. So Shock Jockey, Bucking Bronco, Murder of Crows, Possession, and the Come Devil's down, Kiss. The we haven't seen a few of those yet. And uh, you Salt Machine, we're just gonna wait with that. Because over here, there's a free sample machine. for possession. Has a pay telephone ever refused to connect you with a beloved spouse? Well, it's time to take back control from the men of metal. With possession, you are the master. You will bend any machine to your will. There we go, so we can take control of machines with possession. Every one of those. With just a whisper, they're all ears. Do you hear the whispering? And then she transforms into something very, <laughs> very creepy. And going away. So the whispering we hear is actually very interesting because it's a transcript of Romeo and Juliet played backwards. And there we go. Kind of similar as the way that Bioshock 1 and 2 did it. Um, with a little uh, demonstration showing you what possession does. I think this is pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, and this is salts. Does this do anything? No, it just starts the music. And these are salts. So salts are the uh, Eve from Bioshock 1 and 2. So just our magic meter or mana meter if you want. And then we have uh, yeah, more balloons. So let's try and get out of here. So normally you shouldn't, you couldn't be able to uh, buy a ticket because if Sorry, you try, pal, the raffle is all sold out. Entrance is reserved for dignitaries and very important personages alone. I'm guessing that don't mean me. But with possession, of course, we can just do this. Well, if it isn't Assemblyman Buford, your spot at the raffle awaits. Don't know why I didn't recognize you before. Odd. Always good to have gentlemen of your caliber at our fine fairgrounds. Yes, indeed. And then we have a, uh, well, two familiar faces. Heads. Or tails. Come on, let me through. Heads. Or tails. Huh. huh. Yeah, indeed. And it looks like it's always heads with these people. So we have a man and a woman. It's the same couple that was juggling outside of the telescope before. Let's flip the coin. Heads. Told you. Hmm. I never find that as satisfying as I'd imagined. Chin up, there's always next time. I suppose there is. And look at his back. It's always heads. And the way they were described is very similar to a couple we've seen even before that. We won't leave until you do. You have my word on that. And that's an interesting thing as well. We won't leave until you do. Us specifically. So that's the same couple from the boat, because they're the same uh, voice actors as well. Because, well, it's just the same couple. Is it that time of year already? Look! Sound! So we can hear the raffle starting already. I'm just gonna check uh, everything here. And buy health kits and salt. We don't need either of those just yet, so I'm just... He looks lost. He looks just fine to me. Mary, you are a living, walking scandal. Yes, you are, Mary. 
So there we go. Um, let's continue on. And there we have sing praise to the songbird for he's the protector of the lamb. Looks like we have another mechanical menace at our hands. And they're not big daddies this time. Just gonna keep going here. I don't think is there anything here. Maybe a bit of money. Yeah, there we go. Four silver eagles. And then continue on. More balloon versions of Benjamin Franklin and uh, Washington. And look at that. Ah, the whole division got them. If we're gonna flush the box out of the Skyline system, then we gotta have the best. Huh? We got any openings in the group? I'd love to bust some Vox skull. <laughs> so that's the Skyhook, and it's actually used to uh, go past Skylines. And now we have a statue which is doing something weird. So it transformed from a man to a woman for some reason. And then we have the name of the man and maybe even the woman. So our Lutes gave Columbia her wings. So there we have it. The couple we've been seeing is called Lutes. And then we have a, well, a, a, a doll, a songbird doll. Let's see the candy bar. So it's indicating that there was a child here. So let's pick up the fox phone and listen to the audiologue of Constance Field. Madam Lutess, I have read all your books on the sciences. Mama says it's not a fit occupation for a lady. But I think she's jealous of our cleverness. Is it true that only you were allowed to visit the girl in the tower? If the lamb is lonely too, I should like to meet her, as we would have much in common. Warmest regards. Constance. So there we go. Uh, Madame Lutes has a, uh, a fan. And, well, the more interesting fact about that foxophone is, of course, that Lutes is one of the only ones who can actually... who has the right to visit Elizabeth in the tower. But, let's continue on. We're almost at the fair. It's gonna be fun. What the... And there we go. So, so you shall know the false shepherd by his mark. There's AD written on the hand of the false shepherd. And we have that same mark indicating that we are probably the false shepherd. Jeremiah Finks wants you to attend the July 6th raffle. So there we have, of course, indicating the... Uh, well, referring to the... Uh, the Sam, the Uncle Sam posters that were used uh, to gather American soldiers in the war. And there's uh, our first view of a turret. Because that's actually uh, an ultimate turret over here. Because we saw that in the, uh, um, the uh, cinematic for possession, we saw that same machine. So let's go, let's go straight to the fair. I mean, they're singing, it sounds very, very fun, like a lot of fun. And uh, I, I just want to go there. There we go, look at all the people here. And they're all singing. Goodbye, now, Irene. The 1912 raffle has officially begun. Mister, mister. So uh, there's somebody, well, shouting for us, calling our name, well, not our name, but she's uh, trying to pull our attention. So let's talk to the woman with Sorry. the hockey balls. Oh, <laughs> baseballs, Silly. baseballs, There's never baseballs. a charge for the raffle. You've been sleeping under a rock? 77. Uh oh. 77. That's a lucky number. I'll be rooting for you. Bring me So the telegram the indicated that, that we shouldn't pick number 77, and we just did. All, of Columbia? <laughs> all right then. The winner is... Number 77! Well, what do you know? Uh-oh. Over here, he's the winner! Number 77, come and claim your prize! First throw! First throw. And this is where this game starts to take a bit of a weird and creepy turn. Please don't do this. It was me, it was all me, please, please! So now we get our first dilemma. Please, what are you doing? Come on, are you gonna throw it? Or are you taking your coffee black these days? <laughs> I warned you about the racism. I'm the one you want! Oh, looks like we've got a shy one here! So uh, we can throw at the couple or throw at the announcer, and we're gonna throw at the announcer. Son of a bitch! Wait! It's him! 
Well, we have a bit of a problem. Where'd you get that brand, boy? Don't you know that makes you the backstabbing snake in the grass, false shepherd? The false shepherd! And we ain't letting no false shepherd into our flock. <laughs> Show them what we got planned, boys! Uh-oh, Skyhook. Pulsing the ball up, he's distracted, and... Ooh! Yeah, this game is also a bit more gruesome. So that's Jeremiah Fink, by the way, the guy over there. And now we're gonna fight, have to fight our way to Monument Dalek. This thing's just... Just gonna have to try and get hit here. Just gonna try, because this... There we go. So let's search the corpses of these guys. I didn't get hit, which is good. So the couple over there was on display. Oh, God. They had an interracial relationship. So that's why it's not, uh, it wasn't really accepted at the, uh, at Colombia. Well, not actually at the rest of the world either at this stage in, uh, in history. And there we go, finishing moves, because that's been added. Ooh, I am so sorry. Because, yeah, this game has finishing moves. Melee finishing I moves. I know what you did. Where is he? Where's that last one? So the people, of course, are scared and uh, when we try to get to them, they're going to try and get away. Shit. And there we have another finishing move. Pulsing the corpse away. There's a few of those. Oh, he has a gun. And there we go, he was out of ammo. Well, he needed to reload, and now we have a gun. Which turns things around a bit, because this game is a bit harder than Bioshock, in my opinion. In Bioshock 1 and 2. Because, uh... It's a bit heavier on the combat. And it doesn't flow as well as Bioshock 1 and 2. Is there anything here? No. Okay, here we go. I think this area is pretty safe. I'm just gonna try and see if there's any money available here. Because, um, oh, Foxophone, of course. Jeremiah Fink. I told you, Comstock. You sell them paradise, and the customers expect cherubs for every chore. <laughs> no menials in God's kingdom. <laughs> well, I have a man in Georgia who leases us as many Negro convicts as you can board. Why, you can say they're simple souls in penance for rising above their station. <laughs> Whatever eases your conscience, I suppose. So Jeremiah Fink is actually the businessman of Colombia because we've seen his name on a lot of the machines we've uh, passed so far. But he didn't really uh, agree with Comstock's way of uh, handling the city. Let's get all the silver eagles we can get and check out the vending machine. The way this works is actually the vending machine lowers the price of everything if you use possession first. And you can actually get some money out of it as well. So there we go. And then, oh. Yeah, that doesn't work yet. So adds the ability to possess humans who suicide when the effect expires. Making this creepy ass game, because this game is pretty creepy, especially compared to other uh, Bioshock games. And man into it's just really, really unsettling oh, how this game handles things. So a difference with the other Bioshock games is that every plasmid, well, pla I'm calling it plasmid, it's gonna happen a few times. Every um, vigor has the alternate fire to make it into a trap. So let's pick up the salts here so we uh, don't waste too much of those. Because yeah, every machine you uh, possess actually gives you a bit of money. It's not always useful, but it might be later on. So there we have the turret we saw before. And if we possess the turret, there we go. It's going to fight for us and start shooting at, well, everybody coming towards us. Just gonna let the machine gun take take out everybody over there and just take a look around in the crates here while they're getting murdered. Yay, fireworks! There he is. Where he is? Are they? Nah. They don't know where I am. Just firing off all the fireworks. Yeah, searching around. Seems like the turret is still doing okay. 
The only annoying thing about... Oh, Jesus Christ, where the hell did you come from? Are you serious? Where the hell did these guys come from? So the only, only annoying thing is that the turrets... Turns back... Um, well, evil, I wouldn't call it evil. But it turns bad if you... Uh, Okay, firing at more people. There we go, headshot. And the cool thing about this game is as well, is that the game changes... Well, fires up some uh, some notes when you headshot people. So you know when you kill somebody. I can't bypass the turret over there so I'm gonna have to sneak past where did these guys come from they're going over there just gonna have to be ca there's one over there there we go just gonna try to not fire at the turret because they only have a limited window and if I just try and stay over here I shouldn't be in the way of the turret yeah, there we go. Let's jump over. And check out everything we can. Ooh, that was a problem. Shit. I'm gonna have to use possession on the uh, turret there. gonna try and move away because they were look well yelling at something called the fireman he's here and I'm guessing he's not gonna just well uh, cool off my temperature because the fireman is yeah I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna tell just gonna let you uh, guys enjoy the show oh no they changed the buttons around because usually in the other Bioshock games uh, X is picking stuff up and now it's square. And uh, let's go through the door. Yeah. Open gate. It's getting hot. What's going on? Yeah, because the fireman is practically the opposite of what we know as a fireman. I'm just going to try and do this the hard There we go. David and Goliath, so uh, there's a fireman. I know what to do, so that's why he's usually easier to beat if you know what to do. But he's actually a souped-up version of one of those cops in a suit and equipped with the Devil's Kiss Vigor, which makes him very, very dangerous. So let's pick up his version of Devil's Kiss. Devil's Kiss. Well, you only live once. There we go. A very, very provocative uh, bottle to sip from. And this is horrifying. Because you actually burn off your flesh when you sip from Devil's Kiss. That's something they didn't mention when we when we were at the fair. Let's search the lockbox. There's a lot of stuff in there. So there we go. Again, you can place traps, fire traps, and otherwise you throw uh, fireballs. That wasn't no sample. Nope, that wasn't no sample. So they uh, beefed up the uh, animations when you first get the uh, Vigor. Similar to uh, the animation you receive when you get Electro Bolt for the very first time in Bioshock 1. It's uh, similarly, well, aggressive. But, yeah, in this game it's a lot worse than that. Because it's not, by far, not the worst one of them all. Uh, let's get the popcorn. And there's a health pack, but I don't need it just yet. Just gonna try and. Are they coming from over there? Yeah. Just gonna use the turret to uh, deal with them. There we go. I'm gonna have to be rather quickly because possession runs out. And if that happens, they're gonna start firing at me. Um, is there another voxophone here? I don't think there's here. There's one here right away. Oh, for fuck's sake. I do try to do that usually, but it always fails for some reason. I need to I need to be. <sighs> Let's cut that. Just need to be careful with my health, because 
What the hell? I think there was another health pack over here, yeah. Need to get into this game a bit, because it's it's quite a bit different than uh, Bioshock 1 and 2. Which makes it interesting, because more of the same would have been a bit boring. But it's a lot more graphic and uh, heavier on the teams than uh, Bioshock 1 and 2 was. There we go, more salts. With another devil's kiss in case you missed the first one. And there we go, the blue ribbon. Uh, a, a pig meat restaurant. The blue ribbon, the finest quality of meat. Uh, let's get the silver eagles and leave everything else there. Nothing here. I thought there was another voxophone around here, but I might be mistaken. Not entirely sure. Bread and two apples. Might be handy. But yeah, let's enter the blue ribbon. There we go. The blue ribbon, and uh, we're inside. Season pass awarded you four gear pieces, a gold machine upgrade, and a gold pistol upgrade. Yeah, that's why I did think that pistol did a lot of damage. So that's because all of the DLC is in the uh, is in the. Okay, God, for fuck's sake! You must collect all of your rewards before continuing to Monument Island. Okay, I will. So those extra pieces usually originally you got those if you pre-ordered the game but since everything is in the collection you get those uh those items immediately um let's pick up all the money we can find a bit more salts soda pop and the items we need should be around here so let's first look at all the kinetoscopes over here a look back at opening day also made by fink by the way 1893, the dream of the prophet is finally aloft. So that's about 20 years ago, 19 years ago. Columbia begins her journey to spread America's vision to the world. And the end. There we go. And then we have the prophet stands up to foes within and without. 1901, the Chinese boxers take hostage American innocence. The Prophet and Columbia stand up for America and of course help defend America. So this is uh, what tanks does Columbia get. Washington to Comstock stand down. We stand behind the Prophet. And then we have a little a little movie in, uh, incorporated even. So Columbia was first created with the help of America itself. but. After uh, Colombia helped out with their, uh, well, aerial war vessels against the Chinese in this alternate universe, by the way. Um, America, well, was afraid of how much power Colombia actually had with their uh, aerial superiority. And then the Prophet Comstock decided to uh, secede from the so-called Union. A cowardly America recalls her finest city... No tanks, says the Prophet, we're fine on our own. And then, uh, of, com of course, Columbia secedes from the Union and disappears into the clouds. Which is, of course, something Columbia can do easily. And we're at 6 out of 37 already. And now, of course, because of the DLC, we have a lot of gear here. Um, it's a bit overpowered. We do indeed. Why are you following me? We were already here. Why are you following us? Aperitif. So here we are again with uh, with Lutes, with the uh, Lutes, well twins apparently because they have the same outfit and the same hairdo, um, which is interesting. And they're here again in front of us instead of behind us. So they got in front of us somehow. That handy in a pinch. The so difference let's pick up. Between life and death. Thank you. So let's pick up the shield upgrade, which is going to be very very handy. And also something new in Bioshock adds a magnetic repulsive shield. Field to improve the fence. What was that? Surprising. Surprising that it worked. Surprising that it didn't kill him. But well, thank you. Also, field around one's body can come in handy if it doesn't kill you. A fair point. Indeed. So thank you, thank you for the shield. And there's this. Is this, is this guy drunk or dead? Doesn't look like he's. Well, he's sleeping. And I could get the pistol uh, ammo, but I shouldn't. But now. Another thing is infusion. 
which allows us to upgrade either our health, shield, or salt bar. I'm gonna start with a shield upgrade, because shield is the most Test important the thing we order. have. And then we have a few, a few more apparently, so let's pick up that. One more into shield, and then we're gonna put one into salt. And is there anything else? Yeah, there's two more over there, which is really, really a lot. Ammo advantage. Increases clip size for all weapons by 75%. I'm gonna take it and that's gonna automatically equip that. So this is similar to tonics. This is the uh, the replacement for tonics from Bioshock 1 and 2. So it's gear. Eagle Strike. Increase weapon damage by 50% when on skylines. Just gonna take it. Then we have a new hat. Electric Punch. 70% chance that a melee target is stunned. Victim is vulnerable for 4 seconds. So let's take that as well. An Electric Punch. And then Ghost Soldier killing with a Vigor Trap has a 70% chance to cause the enemy gun to become a ghostly ally for a few seconds. So uh, the perks you get from these things, so the gear, is actually a lot uh, more interesting than uh, the tonics in Bioshock uh, 1 and 2. So we got the trophy already for being fully dressed with uh, everything. So boots, pants, shirt and a hat. We don't never see that because there's no mirrors in uh, Bioshock Infinite, but... New pants, bull rush. Melee targets are knocked back, which might be interesting, but I'm just gonna take it for now. And then we have uh, Betrayer. Killing a possessed human causes them to explode. Nearby enemies take 360 damage over 5 seconds. What's the other one? Eagle Strike. I'm gonna keep Eagle Strike for now, so let's just take it. And then we have... A new hat, extra extra, when found, Voxo found phones provide silver eagles. Let's equip that for now, because that might be very, very interesting. Because we're gonna, well, do that every time. And a gold bar, which is causing me to jump for joy. Then let's look at the gear. Fleet feet, when evading, movement speeds are increased. Affects side strafing and back paddling. Compared to increased weapon damage. Oh. I do like being faster, so that might be an interesting one. Handyman Nemesis increases damage against Handyman by 50%. We're not going to see those for now, so let's take the gear. Kind of spoils the fact that we're going to have to fight those, but... Well, it's a, it's a minor, a minor spoiler. Sugar Rush. After eating a snack, move 50% faster for 3 seconds. Against ammo advantage, no. Let's just take it. Uh, and then we have two more infusions, which I think I'm gonna go into health and into shields. There we go. And is that something? No, that's just cigarettes. Which is pretty much everything I could get here. If I go behind the counter, there's a wallet and a bit more money. Of which we have a lot at the moment. Wow, that does actually a lot, that uh, ammo capacity improvement thingy. Ammo advantage. But yeah. Let's continue on, because everything else is uh, is done. I believe, do, do they disappear again? No, they don't. There we go. Let's uh, get everything over here, and let's pick up another Voxophone. Ed Gaines. Father Comstock called on me today to write his biograph. Me. The man pays for exactly 100 pages in advance. Now, I'm half a Jew when I smell silver, so I say, I say, Father... Your flock would pay for a thousand. You know, why settle for less? And then the prophet looks to me and says, One hundred will suffice, as I know how it ends. One hundred will suffice, because I know how it ends. Which is interesting to say to someone who's making your biography. Um, but yeah, that's what Father Comstock said. Now, we're in the kitchen of the Blue Ribbon. Uh, I am gonna take a little break, so when we get back, we're gonna head out back into Colombia and we'll see what else we can do. Because we need to still head to Monument Island to save uh, Elizabeth from the tower, but there's, of course, people looking for us now. We're not incognito anymore. So, uh, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And uh, when we get back, we'll continue on. See you guys next time. Goodbye.